Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, we have a really great artist by the name of Nick V, and he's gonna be showing you how to make a beautiful automotive car render using Octane, Cinema 4D, and Area Light Maps. Now, this is just a short clip from a larger piece of training that we just uploaded for Plus members. And if you're not a member, click down below to learn how you can join and get instant access to everything we've created to help you make more beautiful renders and save time inside of Cinema 4D. And with that, let's get into today's tutorial. Let's see how to set up some nice studio lighting. To get the studio look, we will use a combination of a few key elements. Firstly, I like to start with a nice gradient as the base. This will be our foundation for the studio lighting. The reason we use this specific gradient to light our car is to give a sense of depth to the curvature. Let's take the side door for example. If we take away the gradient, can you tell what shape the door has? It's very unlikely. On the other hand, if we have the gradient, we can guess the curvature of the car without knowing what it looks like in real life. This is the same technique I used and explained in the tech lighting course. In photography, they use the same technique with big overhang softboxes. Luckily in CG, we don't need all of that expensive equipment to get the same result. Now, once the gradient will be done, we will add some targeted lights to light the areas that the gradient might have missed. Alright, let's kick things off in Octane. Here I have the same textured car from the previous episode, with no lighting whatsoever. Now, to create the gradient HDRI, we could use a pre-made one, but that's just another file that we need to keep track of. And we don't really have any control over it. That's why I like to create mine procedurally right here inside of Cinema 4D. Let me show you how it's done. I start by dropping in a regular Octane HDRI environment here. Then instead of using an HDRI like we did in the previous episode, I will insert a Cinema 4D gradient. What this will do is it will map our gradient onto a spherical projection to be used as an HDRI. First, we need to set our gradient to vertical. So as you can see in the type, I have it set to 2D V for vertical. That way it's aligned correctly. And then we can start making the gradient itself. Here's the gradient we want to achieve. For this, I made three points on my gradient chart, as you can see here. Two of them are black on each side, and one of them is white in the middle. As you can see, the first two are extremely close together. This is what gives the razor sharp reflection. And the third one is further away to give us a nice gradient fade, as you can see here. And there you go, just like that, you made a fully procedural gradient background light. Now, once you understand how this concept works, you can go ahead and experiment with whatever you're going for. For example, you can change the pattern of the gradient or the color, the choice is yours. All right, we got our base lighting done. Now let's add some lights to the areas that the gradient might have missed. The first area that comes to mind is the wheels. So let's do those. I started off with creating two basic octane area lights. As you can see here, I have two of them. Now, some people might think, well, isn't it simpler to make a targeted area light and make it target the wheel? Well, there's another trick for that. See, if you do a targeted light, you can only pivot around the center axis of the object, which means you got no control over its rotation. That's why I like to use the set active object as camera option. Now, this isn't an obvious option to find, so that's why I like to dock it somewhere in my workspace so it's easily accessible. To do that, you go over to Window, Customization, Customize Palettes. Here, you will be able to search for set active, and as you can see, you will see set active object as camera. And from here, you can simply click and drag it and put it wherever you want in your workspace. I have mine over here. All right, now that we have the tool docked in our workspace, we can start using it. The first thing I do when playing with lights is I lock my camera in Octane. So I go into my camera setup and then I go to options and I uncheck check camera. What this will do is it will allow you to move in your viewport without affecting the Octane Live Viewer. So once you have the light in your scene, you select the light and you press the button we made before, the set active object as camera. Once you hit that button, you will be looking through the perspective of that light. You can move around and position the light as if you were the lamp from Pixar. Let me zoom in to my live viewer so you can see it a bit easier. There you go. And I'm going to position on the wheel. And now, as you can see, if I move my viewport, it will move the light over. So from here, all I have to do is to move around and position my light like I want it to. 
So I think I'm going to go on the back here. Yeah, that's what I did. I went from a back angle, so we get some nice reflection on the wheels. There you go, something like this. Awesome. And there you go, just like that, you easily placed your light exactly where you wanted it to. Once you're done placing your light, you can simply go back into your regular camera. This is the technique I use to place those two lights in my scene. Now, you might notice that my lights are in fact circular and not square. That's another hidden setting inside the light itself. For that, you will need to select the light itself, not the octane tag, and go over to the details tab. From here, you will be able to set its radius and the shape here. As you can see, area shape, you can click and you can select its shape. I went with a disc. Perfect, now the last thing we have to do is to apply the softbox textures onto the lights. This will give them a nice fade. The reason we use a gradient light once again is to accentuate the curvature of the rims. We position them parallel to the car so they cast fading light. Thanks to the dissipating light effect caused by the gradient softbox, it tells us what kind of curvature is present. To easily try out different softboxes, I use the GSG HDRI Link plugin. Once you get the plugin installed, all you have to do is right click a light and click HDRI Link. This will apply an HDRI Link tag to your light. Once you've done that, you need to drag and drop the texture input of the Octane light onto the HDRI Link tag. This will tell the plugin which input to control. So what you do is you click the Octane tag, you click and hold the texture, and you drag and drop it onto the HDRI Link tag. Once it's linked, you will see the tag icon light up. And if you click it and click Launch Browser, you will see your HDRI light maps. From here, you can simply browse and click the one you want to use. In my case, I use the Softbox Circle Soft Edge for both of my lights, as you can see here. We're almost done with our studio lighting setup. We got our gradient light and our targeted spotlights done. I showed you how to set up the shadow catcher material in the previous episode. So all we have left is the radial gradient background. Now I will be rendering the car without the background anyways, but I will still show you how to set it up in Cinema 4D because I think it's nice to be able to envision the final outcome of your render while working. For this, I used the same trick as the previous episode. I used the Cinema 4D background object, which you can find here by click and hold and select background. And to the background, I applied a regular Cinema 4D material. Let me open it here. And inside of color, I made a gradient, just a basic gradient. And inside, I set it to 2D circular. And then I made a radial gradient from about 20% gray to 10% gray. As you can see, this gives us a very nice studio looking background. Now, just in case you might not be able to see the background, you need to make sure that in your Octane render settings, you have alpha channel turned on. Otherwise, you will see the HDRI and not the gradient. And also in case the projection of the gradient looks a bit weird, make sure that you select your material on the background object and the projection is set to frontal. Last thing I wanted to touch on was how to control the brightness of the gradient in specific areas. See, when I did the gradient HDRI, it was too strong in some spots, resulting in some overexposed areas on the top of the car and on the back. To remedy that, I created a big plane object, like this, which I placed behind the car to block the light. Now, obviously, we don't want to fully block it. We just want to be able to control its amount. So what I did is I added an Octane Object Tag. Right click, Cinema 4D Octane, Octane Object Tag. And inside the Visibility tab, I turned off Camera Visibility and Shadow Visibility so it doesn't interfere with our final render. And then the General Visibility, I set it to 0.5. This essentially blocks 50% of incoming light from that side. If I set it to 1, as you can see, we will have absolutely no light coming through. And if I set it to 0, we can see the overexposed light is back. So that's why I went with the middle and set it to 50%. Once I've done that, it balanced the lighting and fixed the overexposed areas while keeping the same brightness in all the other areas. Alright, so that's how I go about setting up my studio lighting setup in Cinema 4D and Octane. In the next episode, we will go over the multi-pass rendering process, and after that, we'll go into Photoshop to composite and retouch both of our renders. 
Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget, if you're already a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, the rest of this training is inside of your library right now, including all of the new stuff that we just added to Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And if you're not a member, definitely click down below and learn more about it. All right, with that, I wanted to thank you guys once again for watching, and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.